let's create a dynamic pipeline in Azure Snaps Analytics Workspaces coming up next on Tales from the Field. You grow hard about what you want to be. Step four. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. This is your first time making it over to Tales for the Field. Give us a like and give us a subscribe. On Mondays, we have an MS Tech Bits. On Tuesdays, we have an Azure Data Community Roundtable where we share links and great videos that can help you with any data project that you've got. On Wednesday, we have another MS Tech Bits. That's one of the videos you're watching right now. Let's get over to the content. I'm in my Snaps Analytics Studio and one of the first places that you're going to think we need to go is integrate, but we don't actually need to start on the integrate tab. We're going to go to manage and then we're going to go to integrate because we've got to create a link service. I'm going to click new and I'm going to come over and I'm going to type Azure SQL and choose the Azure SQL icon. And we're going to make our link service for our SQL balls instance. So I'm going to change this name to be reflective of that. And I'm going to change that to SQL balls three. I'm also going to enable interactive authoring. What happened to SQL balls one and SQL balls two? Don't ask. They're living at a nice farm upstate. I'm going to enable the interactive authoring and I'm going to click apply. After this is enabled, this will allow us to browse things, test our connections. Really important that we get that interactive authoring. I'm then going to go into my Azure subscription and select my subscription. So that way it auto populates a lot of this other information. I'm going to get our SQL balls three instance. I'm going to get our database, our Layham 23, uh, the Sean Layham database. And now we're going to get to security, which is going to be interesting. We're going to use system assigned manage identity. This is a very secure way of taking our TFTF dev name of our snaps instance or our workspace instance and using it as the security context. I'm going to go over my Azure SQL database and I need to create this username in master. And I'm going to say create user from external provider. And I'm going to specify the name of my Synapse workspace. And then I'm going to go to the context of the database, the I'm 23. And all I need is DB data reader. If I was writing data, I need DB data writer, but just DB data reader. And then I can come back over, test my connection. And once it successfully shows that I'm able to access the database, I can save my link service. Now that I've got my link service in place, I can come over here and can begin building our dynamic pipeline. I'm going to select a new pipeline and we're going to change its name to be something more reflective of what we're doing. We're going to name it dynamic pipeline. I'm a simple man. I like things to be titled what they are. Now I need a lookup operation. My lookup operation is going to allow us to dynamically look up items. And I want to dynamically import the tables from my Layham database into my data lake for my parquet files. So that way I can run uh, SQL serverless queries against them. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to say that I need a data set for this lookup and I want my Azure SQL database data set. And I'm going to change this to be reflective. It's just going to be for the Layham database. I'm not going to fill out a table name because we want this to be dynamic and we want it to be able to go across multiple tables. So now that we've got this, I need to change this to utilize a query so I can provide a list of dynamic objects. Let's head back over to SQL Server and we're going to use a very simple query using the information schema. To put this together, I'm just going to go and select new query. I'm going to say LAM26, select star from, give me all the base tables. And boom, there we go. You can see 18 different tables. I don't want to have to create an input and a sync data sets for each of those. That'd be 36 items. I just want two. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this query to be able to pass this information over to a for each operator, because now we're going to loop through and I want my table to load as part of this loop. One thing I need to do is I need to go to my for each operator, go into settings and go into items. We're going to use some dynamic content at this point in time and get used to this because we're going to be doing this quite a bit. I'm going to say list tables as my output activity, and I just need to add dot value to this. And then we're good to go with this value. Now I can come over and I can say copy data. You may notice it's a little bit of a different look for our for each operator. That's new. And so instead of diving inside of, we get to edit inside of as it's on the screen. We're going to go to our source. And now I want to add my dynamic source. I'm going to once again type in SQL. I'm going to select Azure SQL database. 
And then I'm going to name this Laham Generic. I'm going to connect to our service. And again, we're leaving the table empty because we're going to pass through values. Now I need to open this and edit this because I need to add some parameters. We're going to add two new parameters. Our first parameter will be our schema name, which is one of the values we need from our query. And the other is our table name. Once I have these two parameters, I can come back to connection and configure how we'll use them. I'm going to go to connection, click edit by my table. And in the first portion, I will select schema name for the parameter that we just created. And then in the second part, I'm going to say table name. So I've got schema.table. Really simple. And now I'm going to commit this, come back over to my pipeline, and I see there are my parameter values and my source data set. So let's get these values and populate them. I'm going to go to for each and select it. That'll give me the item. And I'm going to say table underscore schema, which is the column name from our query for schema value. And I'm going to do the same thing for table. And this time it's going to be dot table name. And once I have these values in place, I can go and I can begin making my dynamic sync. We're going to select new. I'm going to use my data lake gen two, which already comes attached as part of my snaps analytics workspace. We're going to select parquet for our file system. I'm going to once again, name this something reflective of what we're doing. Well, I'm parquet generic. I'm going to select that default workspace and I'm just going to click. Okay. I could browse to the file system right now, but I'm going to edit this and we're going to add our parameters. And that's where I'm going to want to do this. I want three parameter names here for me. I'm putting a top folder in place. Then I'm going to have my folder structure, my folder name, and then my file name. Three pretty simple names. I'm going to go back to connection. I'm going to browse because the initial file system path needs to be my container. But my directory, this is where we're going to be dynamic. I'm going to start off with a concatenate function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine my top folder and I'm also going to combine my file name because I only have this one field to say this is the directory where I'm going to go with this data. Once I put those two together, that will connect, concatenate that and give me the file name I'm looking for. I can then go to file name and it's just a simple data set dot file name. Let's save this, come back over to our pipeline and you can see I now have these values to edit. Top folder is hard coded. I'm just going to say lehem underscore pipeline. And then for folder, I'm going to make this dynamic and it's going to be item table underscore name because that's the value we want to pass along for the field for the file name. That's going to be the for each item. And I'm going to say concatenate because I want this file name to be a specific value. I'm going to say my for each item, but I'm going to want to specify that we're going with schema because this is the parquet file that we're saving. And then I'm going to add a dot. And then I'm going to want to add my item again. And I'm going to select my table name. Because I want my parquet file to be schema dot table name dot. And then the parquet extension. And so you can see now I add another comma, a period and parquet at the end. This is going to allow me to be able to save this file in the format that I want it. Once this is done, I go up and I click commit and we are ready to debug our pipeline. This is going to go ahead and load. I'm going to fast forward through this a little bit. This took about two minutes to run. Not bad overall. And the first refresh that I received, you can see that the majority of my data had already been populated. I had queued up a couple other tables. And by the end, I was just waiting for the four each to finish up at a minute and 52. Now I can go over to data. I can go to the container for my Azure data lake. And I can see my Laham pipeline folder is created. There's all the folders for my individual tables. And there's the format for the parquet file I wanted. I can say select top 100 rows, open that up in a SQL server list. And there's my data sitting right there. Now I can begin using this data. What did we cover today? Well, we covered a lot. We covered how you make a pipeline, a dynamic pipeline in Azure Snaps Analytics Workspace. A couple things to keep in mind. You want to make sure in that lookup option that you uncheck uh, the return first row only. Otherwise, the first time you run, you may get an error. 
Keep in mind that if you're looking to do things more dynamic, instead of using a DMV, you may actually have a metadata Azure SQL database. I have a lot of folks that I work with that use this, where they have different values that they pull in to be able to manage their list functions. So that way they're pulling from a table within an Azure SQL database, but it's just storing their metadata to be able to make these pipelines uh, run in, in a complex fashion, but be able to do the things they need to in a very dynamic way. You know where we like to keep this going? In the comments down below. Was this helpful? Did you enjoy it? Would you like to see more content like this? We'd love to hear from you. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today on Tales from the Field. Take care, everybody. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up.